Yo, hi Fans von Beyond Pixels, Max hier. Ich bin hier heute im Wiener Konzerthaus. In diesen altehrwürdigen Mauern trifft heute Popkultur auf klassische Musik. Warum? Video Games Live findet heute zum zweiten Mal in Wien statt. Äh, letztes Jahr war es das im Gasometer, dieses Jahr eben hier in den altehrwürdigen Hallen des Wiener Konzerthauses. Und bevor wir uns die Show geben, haben wir natürlich Tommy Tellerico, den Veranstalter des Ganzen und den Initiator von Video Games Live, zum Gespräch gebeten. In diesem Sinne, viel Spaß beim Interview. So, Mr. Tellerico, I got the honor of interviewing you today. Yay! Yay! <laughs> I get the honor of being interviewed by you. Thank so you very much. <laughs> um, so, you're playing your 361st show tonight of Video Games Live here in Vienna. Yes. So, for starters, for people who might not have seen one of the 360 other shows so far, or I have never heard of it, what is Video Games Live? Yeah, so Video Games Live is all the greatest video game music of all time, played by a full symphony and choir. But what makes it really special and unique is that everything's completely synchronized to massive video screens, a stage show production, rock and roll lighting, special effects, interactive elements with the crowd. So. Uh, I kind of like to describe it as having all the power and emotion of a symphony orchestra, but combined with the energy and excitement of a rock concert, mixed together with all the cutting edge visuals and interactivity and technology and fun that video games provide. So, you know, my goal was I wanted to create a show for everyone, not just hardcore video game fans, not just for hardcore symphony fans, I wanted it to be for everyone because one of my goals, my main goal is I wanted to prove to the world how culturally significant and artistic video games have become. But I also wanted to help usher in a whole new generation of young people to appreciate the arts and to appreciate orchestral and symphonies, you know, orchestral music. And in order to do that, I didn't want to create a traditional symphony show, you know, where it's just a bunch of old people on stage in tuxedos and shh, everybody's got to be quiet. Okay, now let's play the music. Shh, everybody, you know. Uh, what 15-year-old thinks that's fun, you know? Um, and uh, so we wanted to create an event, a show, uh, you know, a complete celebration of the video game industry. And video games are fun and they're visual and they're exciting and they're in your face. And so that's what we wanted to do with the show. So, um You know, I think that's the reason why we've been around now for 14 years and we're just getting bigger and bigger because you don't have to know anything at all about video games in order to come to the show and have a huge appreciation of what video games are and what they've become. And again, that was that was my main goal. Yeah. Since you said you started 14 years ago, mm -hmm. um, I mean... You also got the Ambassador Award from the GDC for mm -hmm. contributing to the video games industry that much. Do you consider yourself an ambassador because like you traveled in this spring tour, you traveled Zurich, Munich, uh, London. London, Manchester. We were in China and Malaysia and uh, the Middle East and Qatar the, the week before that. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I feel that, you know, I've been a video game composer for over 25 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, I've worked on over 300 video games and... Uh, Thank you for MDK and the Rathalom Gym, by the way. Oh, gr yeah. <laughs> groovy! Groovy! Uh, uh, and, and so, you know, and, and the other thing too, I think with the Ambassador Award is I started a non-profit organization called the Game Audio Network Guild, or GANG, as the letters spell out. Uh, I started that in 2002, the same year I started Video Games Live. And... Um, And that was an organization for anyone who's interested in getting into the video game industry, doing audio or music or voiceover, anything sound wise. And we have over 2,500 members and, you know, I shared all my information that I've learned over the years. And, and now the group's become, you know, really, really big. So it's been great. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I, I always love giving back. I think, you know, that's the way the universe works, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the more you give, the, the, you know, the more you receive. And um, so, you know, I've been very fortunate to, uh, you know, to have a, 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 a great and long career in the video game industry, a dream come true for me. I mean, my two greatest loves growing up were always video games and music, you know. Uh, but I grew up in the 70s and, and early 80s, you know, 
And so there was no such thing as a video game composer back then, you know. So, um, but when I was 10 years old, this is in the late 70s now, when I was 10, I used to take my dad's cassette recorder. They're all about this big. And uh, I would take it down to the local arcade and I'd record all my favorite game music and, or game sounds. And there wasn't much back then. Space Invaders, uh, Pac-Man, I think had just come out, uh, Asteroids, Missile Command, you know. But I'd record all that and then I'd take it home and I'd record all my favorite uh, game music at home. You know, my Intellivision, my Atari 2600, Commodore 64, Apple II. And I would take the tape and I'd splice it all together and I'd invite my neighborhood friends over. And I would put my favorite video games on the television behind me. I'd play the tape and I'd jump up in front of the TV with a guitar and I would play along with the music, you know? So that was, uh, that was 40 years ago. And uh, so I think Video Games Live was manifested from a 10 year old's mind, <laughs> you know? And, uh, and so it's, it's funny how, how the world works, you know? Uh, I just, it's something that I've always loved and always been a part of. So uh, to be able to do this and, and to bring my colleagues' music uh, all over the world and to, you know, spread how the importance of video games and, and the art form that it is, you know, because some people still think, you know, people who don't play video games may have a negative opinion of video games. Oh, games cause violence and, and oh, you're just a nerd and, you know, you have no <laughs> life. All you do is sit around and play video games. Now, people who play video games, I mean, my generation, we were the first to grow up on video games, right? Uh, I'm 48 years old now. And we were the first to grow up. So anyone who's like 50 and under, we grew up playing video games. That's half the world, you know? So eventually when my generation becomes grandparents, the whole world would have grown up playing video games. And it, at that point is when it fully evolves into our culture. So um, we're still not at our limit yet. We still have a ways to go. But, uh, you know, what an exciting time to, to see it all happen from... Pong, black and white, no, barely any sound, no story, no characters, to, to now, you know, a game like Skyrim or Uncharted or, you know, God of War, whatever. Uh, what an incredible leap. And, and again, only the last 40, 50 years this has happened. It's pretty amazing. So, and... Uh... Do you maybe have like a vision? What can be possible? I mean, it's uh, VR knocking at our doors right now. And what do you think is possible? Uh, also, maybe is there another evolution possible in regarding the soundtracks of video games? No, you know, I, in, oh, yeah, in regards to technology, you know, when I first started doing video game music in the you know, late 80s, early 90s, um, it was bleeps and bloops. It was a little tiny chip on a, on a system and you didn't have much to work with. So, so the challenge back then was we have to try to get this to sound like something. So it might have taken a day to write a song, but a week to get it to sound any good, you know. Um, and then in the mid-90s, when CD-ROMs became available uh, for storage, that enabled me in the industry to record real music, you know. Um, I was the first person to ever record a live guitar in a video game for the Terminator uh, on this mega CD. And, uh, and, and now we could start recording orchestras and choirs and rock and roll and electronic and EDM and stuff. And so um, you saw a big revolution happen. Uh, but then by the time the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360 came around, we had limitless you know, space, we were doing 5.1 audio. We were doing, you know, very high quality. We could do multiple streams, so we could do interactive music and layer in different instruments along the way as the player was playing. You could change the music on the fly. And when you, when you see the audio jump from PlayStation 3 to PlayStation 4 in regards to the music, there isn't a big jump, because uh, we're pretty much at our ceiling at this point. So technology-wise, for audio, were there. It, it's, it, it would be, to compare it, it would be like for the graphics, where the graphics finally got completely photorealism. That's where we are with music now. 
graphics still have a little bit ways to go. I mean, sometimes you look at like a FIFA game or one of the driving games and you're like, is that, is that the TV or is that, is that a video? You can't even tell, right? Uh, but with audio, we're already there, which is, which is really uh, fun. Um, yeah, VR, um, you know, will we continue to see uh, evolvement in, uh, in VR? I, I think so. Is it going to take over video games? No way. Mm. There's no way. You know, just like when the Wii first hit the scene, oh, this is how we're going to start to control games now. It's like, come on, it's a gimmick, you know. Um, how did that work out for Nintendo? Where, you know, they're kind of at the bottom of the barrel now, aren't they? You know, so they, they gambled and, and lost. But, um, you know, because when you think about it, I mean, think about playing a driving game or a fighting game. You have to have absolute pixel precision. And you just can't get that by doing this, you know. Uh, in VR, is it a new experience and a fun experience? Absolutely. I mean, you put that headset on and you're in that world. I think that's great, you know. And I think that will continue to evolve, you know. And I think it'll always be there. You know, because I mean, remember, people were doing VR in the 90s. And then it kind of went away. <laughs> and then, Talking about Nintendo again and their disastrous the virtual, virtual boy. It, virtual boy. Well, but even even like big computers were doing it. But, you know, people were getting dizzy and vomiting all over the place, you know. <laughs> so they, they've, they've, made, uh, they've, they've made a big stride in that, uh, in the computing process and stuff. So I think VR is going to be around. I think it's here to stay. But I certainly don't think that it's going to take over video games. There's still a lot to be said about just having a home system or a PC and being able to, you know, control to pixel perfect with your mouse or with a controller exactly what's going on on screen. So, okay, let's go back from technology to, uh, well, video games life. Mm -hmm. You said that your mission is to merge the audiences. So mm -hmm. the young ones who do not appreciate or not to that extent, appreciate the classical arts music mm -hmm. and also maybe older people who do not appreciate video games just yet. Yeah. So what do you have maybe contact with the audience and what were maybe the two best uh, uh, um, commentaries on video games live and how maybe it changed the views of, oh, let's great. say, a person maybe mid-40s, 50s no, or it's whatever? Great. It's a great... Um, the door close. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, no, it's a great question. Um, the answer being, um, I'll tell you a couple stories. So we were playing with the uh, the Pittsburgh Symphony in the United States. Pittsburgh Symphony is one of the one of the best symphonies that they have. They're top ten in the world, and um, we were playing there. And a woman comes up to me who played in the orchestra, and she had tears in her eyes. And she comes over to me and she says, Tommy, I just want to thank you so much for creating this show and making this amazing thing. And uh, she says, you know, uh, I've been playing in the orchestra for 20 years now. And I have a 17-year-old son and I'm a single mom. And she says, I've never, I, all I've wanted is my son to come and see me play because I'm so proud. I've worked so hard to get to the Pittsburgh Symphony. And And I've just wanted my son to come and see my accomplishment. And 17 years, he's never been to a show of mine. And she starts crying, tears come. She says, until now, tonight. And she goes, not only that, he has brought all his friends with him. And all he's been doing in school is bragging to everybody about how his mom is going to be playing Halo and Warcraft and Final Fantasy. And, and she gave me a big hug. And, you know, so, I mean, that is just, I get goosebumps now just just uh, retelling the story and thinking about it. So that was just like, and the other thing that happens a lot is that whenever we do a performance, we'll get emails or Facebook or Twitter messages from people after a performance, usually from parents, and they'll say, I didn't know what to expect. You know, I brought my kids, uh, but my gosh, I was blown away. I get it now. The, the graphics were amazing and the storylines and the characters were so intriguing and the music was so emotional. I understand. Now I know why my kids are so much into video games. Thank you so much for opening my eyes. Or we'll get a letter that says, 
Um, hey, we went to your show last night. I'm a parent of three or whatever. And we were all sitting around the breakfast table talking about your show last night. And my eight-year-old daughter turns to me and says, Mom, I want to start taking violin lessons so that I can learn the music to Kingdom Hearts or Zelda or whatever. So uh, inspiring people, you know, and that's the thing. Video games inspire people. They inspire people to create art. They inspire people like you to create shows and be a journalist. They inspire cosplayers to make these elaborate costumes. They inspire musicians to, uh, if you ever heard of ocremix.org, where thousands of people from around the world are remixing video game music. Uh, the website deviantart.com. Go on there and put in Final Fantasy, Halo, Warcraft, Zelda, Mario. You won't find thousands or tens of thousands, but hundreds of thousands of people who have created art inspired by video games and have uploaded it. So, you know, clearly video game. Think of all the YouTube channels and Twitch TV that deal with video games. I mean, you know, there's 60 million people on Twitch, you know. Um, video games inspire people. They inspire people to create. And that's kind of the message in our show uh, is to get that message out there. It's not just a... I'll tell you what video games isn't. Video Games Live isn't. It's not a symphony on stage playing video game music. You know, it's not that, that that's a portion of what we do. You know, we tell a story. We tell a story of the music. We tell a story of the industry. We tell a story of, you know, uh, the, the historical elements and where the industry is going. And that isn't this great. It's a complete celebration of the game industry. And we want people to share in this and celebrate with us as a group. Because, you know, not a lot of times a couple thousand gamers are all in the room together, right? You know, because gaming, you're playing online, you're playing with people around the world, or, or you're playing by yourself. So this is an opportunity where people who love gaming, who are passionate about gaming, are all in a room together. And this music is playing and it's coming all around you. It's a special thing. It's magic. You can't really describe it until you, you go to a show and see it for yourself. Yeah. Um, let's say... Vienna, City of Music. It's your second show here that yes. you play. Last year it was Gasometer. This year it is Wiener Konzerthaus. And I mean, <laughs> as, <laughs> uh, as you know, because like it says it on the front door. Oh no, it's I also... knew it before I came here. Trust me, I knew it before it's on the door. Uh, of course, probably. <laughs> I, I have to admit, I didn't because like I'm not... <laughs> that, okay. That I, I I like music of course, but <laughs> but I don't know my ways around that much. I know my ways around metal bands, but I guess that's it. <laughs> right. Well, all you have to do is when you go in the lobby, you see the statue of Beethoven. That's yeah. all you need to know for this place. So yeah, I mean, is it something? That's what I actually wanted to ask. It, is it special? It really is. Venue? Now, people watching this in Vienna right now are going to think that I'm just saying this because we're here in Vienna. Oh, you know, he probably says this about other cities, but let me tell you. This is a special thing, and I'm not saying this, you know, because I'm in Vienna. It is a known fact that the greatest orchestras in the world are in Vienna. Vienna Symphony, Vienna Philharmonic, Vienna. This is the play. This is the number one place in the world. This has the number one place in the world for symphonic or orchestral music. This is where Beethoven wrote the Fifth Symphony, the Ninth, for Elise, Moonlight Sonata. This is the city that Be that Mozart chose to live and to and to create all of his masterworks. This is the birthplace of classical music. This is the birthplace of symphonic music and the greatest music ever written in the entire world. That is Vienna, and it still remains today as the number one hotspot, the most incredible place ever. So we played uh, Vienna last year, and, and I've been trying to get here since I started the thing. I mean, it's every true musician's dream to play Vienna, especially ones who, I mean, my favorite composer of all time is Beethoven. Last year when I came to Vienna, I visited uh, Beethoven's burial uh, places. I visited Beethoven's, he had like 39 apartments or whatever in Vienna. I visited, I think, 10 of them. <laughs> Uh, I went to the Beethoven Museum. I went to the Black Camel where Beethoven used to drink. I went to the restaurant where he and his signature is on the wall and Be the Mozart signature is on the wall. Um, we went to the hall right down the street, the uh, Anderween, which is the uh, 
the, the place where Beethoven debuted the Fifth Symphony, dun, 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 first heard right a couple blocks away. Uh, and this, uh, this place here, well, so last year we played more of like a rock venue, you know, and the show went great and it was a huge success. And, uh, but to play this, the concert house, uh, built in the 1800s, home of the Vienna Philharmonic, the v Vienna Symphony plays here. This is a true, this is a true, you know, accomplishment. And the, the show is sold out. So we're seeing more people than came last time. So that's always a great thing. And it's, it, it's an honor. I mean, a Bosendorfer piano made right here in Vienna, right down the street. So there's so much musical history here, right across the street. Not only is there a big Beethoven statue in the lobby of this place, but you go right across the street and it's the premier Beethoven statue uh, in the whole city is right, you know, the, in honor of, of the maestro right there. So you're just, you're steeped in history everywhere. And, and what a special thing. And myself and uh, the conductor tonight, Emer Noon, she's a, one of the greatest conductors in the world right now, female conductor from Ireland. And all we've been doing all year has been talking about this show. Can you believe we're going to be on the stage of the concert house in Vienna? Oh my gosh. You know, so this is, really is a truly special show tonight. And uh, yeah, I mean, the history here and the prestige of being here, it's, it's, it's my favorite show this year, bar none. It absolutely will be. Okay. Um, going back to the show in particular, uh, I saw a video of it and you have this awesome guitar. Does it have a name? Well, I have a couple guitars. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not sure which awesome thing. guitar you're talking it about. It was a little steampunk design. Okay, so that, I don't have that one with me tonight. Oh. That The one you're referring to is the one I use for Halo. Yes, it's a steampunk. It's a sniper rifle, uh, lots of copper. and this. That one's hard to travel with because it's so heavy. Uh, so when we go from country to country, customs and stuff, you know, it looks like a gun and so <laughs> a sniper rifle. So we don't bring that one out of the country uh, for that. But... Uh, But the guitar, uh, I have a lot of different guitars. That's one of them. Uh, and that was a custom-made guitar. Um, in fact, a lot of my guitars are custom. I, uh, the other one I use a lot is a, I have a Spider-Man Les Paul, um, which is they only made uh, 75 of them. And it's signed by Stan Lee, and it's all Spider-Man, Mother of Pearl inlays. Uh, but the one that I'm using tonight is actually the most expensive guitar I have, um, it's a company out of Austin, Texas called Taya, and it's a handcrafted guitar with turquoise and silver and, uh, and, you know, jewels and everything, uh, all over it, both sides, the wood is just incredible. It's all handcrafted. Uh, they, they made one of them. You can look it up online. Actually, if you look for, uh, the, uh, Taya, T-E-Y-E is the, how the company's pronounced, Taya, and it's called the Azteca. The and it's Azteca, and so they have pictures of my guitar that, that they have online. So it's yeah, it's it's pretty wild. So yeah, always always you know I like uh, you know I, I like and it's got a great sound obviously, but uh, I like interesting guitars. Yeah, for sure. So Tommy tallarico has got the guitar swag. Uh, yeah, you got to, you got to. <laughs> <laughs> you got to. I mean, look at Prince. I mean, Prince is the man, you know. He had the, he's got the swag and the swagger, you know. <laughs> so, you know, Prince, and he's about my size. He's a little guy like me. But, um, yeah, you know, look at, look at Prince's guitars. He's, he's, he's the man. Okay. And uh, I told you that I don't have, like, knowledge about classical or symphonical music that much. Mm -hmm. But, um, well, maybe metal bands or what, uh, aside from, like, the symphonical and orchestral music or let's say video game scores do you have any favorite bands uh yeah yeah for sure i mean I, I, I favorite composers i like beethoven is my favorite of all time in any genre of music beethoven first uh, i also like mozart and john williams mm -hmm. uh more of a modern uh, symphonic composer uh so that's it for symphony in uh, electronic music um I love and trance kind of stuff. Uh, I love Enigma and Delirium and uh, my very good friend BT, uh, which I produced his last album, Electronic Opus, where we took all of his best songs and 
uh, updated them because he's been around 20 years and and we added an orchestra to it as well so and we did a big concert it was a huge success and number one on the EDM charts right now um, and then for rock and roll it's Van Halen it's Aerosmith it's Led Zeppelin it's Pink Floyd um, Metallica is up there and uh, let me see what other genre. I love blues. I love classic rock um, from the '50s. Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis. You know those guys were pioneers at the time, um, which took a lot from blues and gospel music before them. Um, so Frank Sinatra, Luciano Pavarotti. Uh, so a very wide eclectic. And the funny thing is, is that when you see the show, you'll hear all of that. So you'll hear blues guitar, you'll hear opera, you'll hear classical, you'll hear speed metal. Uh, yeah, we do, uh, tonight we're doing Command and Conquer and Red Alert and uh, the song uh, from uh, Hell's March. And so it's, uh, I'm looking forward so to that it's, one. It's, it's, it's like heavy metal with uh. the symphony. So you'll hear it all tonight. You'll hear some rock and roll with Castlevania. You'll hear some blues guitar in some of my solos. You'll hear, uh, yeah, so it's, it's all of that. So electronic sounds in some of the pieces. So the popular answer is from Abba to Zeppelin. There you go. <laughs> so to speak. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for your answers. Thank you very much for your time. But before I leave you alone, leave you be and leave you like... Preparing to for tonight's awesome show that I'm or the next interview that's about to walk in. Latest album. You want me to um, sign this? I would You're love you to sign this. We're gonna give it away to our viewers. Perfect. Uh, it would be very nice if you could do so. Let's see. Maybe now while hopefully. I'm doing this, I'm gonna plug our next album. Ooh. Video games live yep. level five. So the way we'll get it on Kickstarter. Exactly. The way this was uh, created was through Kickstarter. And we raised the money because no record companies believe in what we do, you know. Yeah. And so um, we've been going to Kickstarter and our level five album is it's already been funded, but we still have a couple weeks to go. And for me, Kickstarter is a great way to give back to mm -hmm. the people who support us. So if you go on our Kickstarter, you'll see four to eight times the reward value. We're giving away hours and hours of music for just a little bit, uh, a little bit of support. So, what do you want? Just my sign. So I'll say, yo, sign it for yo. the one of the biggest video game and music fans you can imagine. That's how we do, say it in New York. That's how Italians talk. Yo, yo. <laughs> Italians yo, in New York, not in Italy. <laughs> okay. Right, there Thank you, you very much. Thank you very much. Also, das geht an euch raus. Um, Teilnahmebedingungen dazu lasse ich mir noch einfallen, kommen dann wahrscheinlich runter in die Videobeschreibung. Aber hier habt ihr dann ein wunderschön original signiertes von Tommy Tallarico veröffentlichtes Level 4 Album zu Video Games Live. Das könnt ihr gewinnen. Und ja, <lacht> schaut auch auf die Kickstarter Kampagne für Level 5, wenn ihr mehr von Tommy Tallaricos cooler Videogame Performance Musik hören wollt. Und ich würde sagen, aus dem Wiener Konzerthaus geben wir zurück. Das Funkhaus. <lacht> <lacht>